Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to discuss about the Cisco Jabber. That is, we will start with the Cisco Jabber boot up process. And then in the upcoming videos, I will show you the configuration of Jabber, like how we can uh, add the end user and how we can check the home cluster, how we can add the service profile as well as the UC services. So let's start with the Cisco Jabber boot up process first, and then we'll continue to the next topics. So Cisco Jabber boot up process, how it will like start. So as like you have a Jabber already installed on your laptop or on your desktop. And then, so once, once you just open the Jabber, you, you mainly just enter the username and password. So what, what are the things? which are working on the backend. So the first thing is Cisco Jabber will send HTTPS request to the CUCM because there is a connection between Jabber because Jabber is, Jabber is an application which is installed on your machine. So it will send a HTTPS request to the CUCM. So that was the first thing. Before that, the main things which will be like then on the background, on the backend, so the first thing in the Jabber boot up process is Cisco Jabber queries the DNS server first for the service records, that is SRV records. So Jabber will query the DNS server for the SRV records. And if Cisco Jabber, your Jabber is on the corporate network, like uh, you are in the office and you are using, like if you are in the office or you are connected with the VPN. So it means you are connected with the corporate network. So if Jabber is on the corporate network, then the local DNS should reply with the underscore Cisco hyphen UDS server record to provide the location of CUCM or with the cup login server record to provide the location of IMN present service. So these are the main things which it will check on the DNS server, like if Cisco UDS server and the cup login server is there, then only it will check for all other things because in the Cisco UDS, you will enter all the uh, publisher IPs or like all the for all the clusters, all the publishers. And in the cup login server, you will add the IAM and present service. So let me, let me show you how we can add this SRV records in the DNS. So this is our DNS manager. So we have two things here, forward lookup zone and the reverse lookup zone. So forward lookup means you are like uh, using the, if, if you want to use the FQDN to IP, then you will add it in the uh, forward lookup. And if you want to use the IP to FQDN, then you will add these things in the reverse lookup zones. So here I'm using the FQDN. So I will add these things in the forward lookup zones. Let me show you in the upcoming slides how we can add these SRV records. So once, once I just expand this forward lookup zones, you will be able to see so many domains here. Like these all are the FQDNs. And in the reverse lookup zone, you will be able to see the IP addresses here. So these are the reverse lookup zones and these are the forward lookup zones. So we will add our things in the forward lookup zones as we are just taking this, an example of FQDN to IP. So we can just take like uh, one of the one of the DNS service. Like uh, here we just took the example of this and here, once you right click on this folder, you will be able to see the other new records. So once you click on this other new records, it will open up a new window that is resource record type. And from the resource record type, you, you need to choose the SRV, that is service location. As you can also see it here, these Cisco UDS and cup login is already there. So I'm just showing you here how we can add these SRV records. And then you will be able to see they will, uh, it will just add it like this only. So once we click on this uh, TCV, you can click on them in this one as well and you can add this record type. So because this TCP folder is under this madeengine.com. 
So once you uh, open this resource record type, you need to choose the SRV that is service location, and then you can click on the create record. So in the create record, you you need to choose this. You need to just enter this Cisco UDS as well as the cup login. So let's 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 assume like we just clicked on the create record. So once you click on the create record, it will open this new new resource record. This one. That is, you can see it is showing service location that is SRV. So domain it is showing already here tcp.mediation.com because that is already added here. That this underscore tcp is already added, and the domain should be in the name and then with the this mediation.com. So in the service type, you need to mention whether you are going to add the Cisco UDS service or you are going to add the cup login. So as of now. uh we can just assume like you, we are adding the underscore cisco hyphen uds here and then we can uh, configure these things depends on our configuration prop priority weight and the port number like if you are using https or something then we can just change it and in the main things which we need to see it here the first thing is service that you are adding that is underscore cisco hyphen uds and another thing that is host offering this service so you are adding underscore cisco hyphen uds it means you need to mention the cucm fqdn here so here in the host offering this service here you will add the fqdn of the cucm fqdn that is fully qualified domain name like if you have an ip address and that must be associated with the domain name that is fqdn so you will add it here as well like uh, you can just take an example like pct cucm1 uh and with the dns so here you can just enter it in the host offering this service and once you enter the fqdn ip here you can just click on okay and it will show this under source cisco hyphen uds here as well and if if you want to like add other other another cucm another publishers then you can add it again and you can just uh put the second name here in this host offering this service like in this example we have added these two so the second one would the first one would be this one the fqdn is a different one you can see it and the second one would be a different one and the third one is cup login that is i am in presence so let me show you the next part so <clears throat> once you once you add those underscore cisco hyphen uds and the underscore cup login so you only added the host that is offering the service it means you just added the fqdn now how it will change from fqdn to ip because that is the main purpose of forward lookup zone so it it should change from fqdn to ip so we need to add our those ip addresses here as well first so you can you can see it here we are, it is already added this one first second third and we have other uh, cup server as well so i just took one example of edc cucm1 so um, we just added this one this is the host this is the edc cucm1 and the fully qualified domain name what is the fqdn here so we just added this one and then we added the ip address of this fqdn so that once you add this fqdn on the uh, on the underscore cisco hyphen uds it will change it to this ip address so it means it will be able to change from fqdn to ip so we need to add this first here as well like if you have three call managers three publishers then you can add all these three publishers here and presence as well. so you need to add all the servers here first and then you can add it under the tcp so the next so yeah underscore cisco hyphen uds it means you need to add publishers of all clusters and cup login that is present server ips and what's the use of forward lookup that is fqd into ip and what's the use of reverse lookup that is ip to fqdn so we are back on uh, the same one so we just uh, so cisco jabber queries the dns server for service records that was the first part and then second 
if Cisco Jabber is in the corporate network, local DNS should reply with the Cisco UDS as well as with the cup login. So you need to add these things in the UDS as well as cup login, which I just showed you. So that the first one was like Cisco Jabber is on a, if Cisco Jabber is on a corporate network, then local DNS should reply with this one. So we, uh, we can, we can check one another thing as well. If Cisco Jabber is on the internet, then what, what are the things it will check to register? So uh, if, if the Jabber is on the internet, like if you're using it on uh, at your home without connecting with the VPN, so what all are the things it will check? In that case, it should contact the external DNS server, then there will be a use of expressways, that is expressway E and the expressway edge and the expressway core. And then uh, it needs to reach out to the uh, local DNS and then to the CUCM. I will show you all the flow diagrams uh, when the Cisco Jabber is on the internet. Let's just focus on the uh, on the first part that is if Cisco Jabber is on the corporate network. So we already added uh, the underscore Cisco if in UDS and the underscore cup login server in the SRV records in the DNS. So after that, what Cisco Jabber will do? Cisco Jabber uses CUCM IP phone. It's CCMC IP, that is CCMC profile. So Cisco Jabber uses CCMC, P, CCMC IP profile to receive a list of available devices that are bound to the user that is logging into Cisco Jabber. So Cisco Jabber use CCMC IP profile to see like what all are the devices which is associated with this particular user who is logging into the Cisco Jabber. So what's the main use of this CCMC IP profile? So the main main use of the CCMC profile is to control the disk phone activity as well. Like if you have disk phone as well, if you're using Jabber as well, so mainly the main purpose of the CCMC profile to control the disk phone activity. Just, just take an example. If, if you call from, from your phone, if you call from your uh, IP phone, which is on your desk, it will show the status on your Jabber as well that you are on a call. Whether, whether you are like, whether you have CSF profile on Jabber created or not, I will show you like how to create the CSF profile as well. What's the use of it? and how we can configure it on the CUCM as well. So once you are making a call from your IP phone, it should show the status on your Cisco Jabber as well. And it will show that status on Jabber only when CCMC profile is there, like Cisco Jabber use CCMC IP profile as first. And then it will show the status on that Jabber as well. Like if you are in a meeting, if you're on a call, then it will show the same status. Okay, so it will ask for the uh, list of available devices from the CCMC profile. And after receiving the device list, that the user can select a device if more devices are configured. And then it will ask, it will then, then the configuration file, the configuration file is requested from the TFTP server. So the Jabber will ask the configuration file from the TFTP server in order to register that. So once it uh, receives the configuration file and once once the Jabber read the configuration files, like after reading out the configuration file, the device registers using SIP messages because this Jabber will work only on the SIP. So the device will register using the SIP messages. I will show you in the uh, in the flow diagram as well, like how the messages are getting interchanged between the, uh, like from the uh, first Cisco Jabber to the DNS to the local external as well as to the CUCM as well. So uh, I already made a diagram for, I already made a flow diagram for the uh, uh, Jabber, which is on the internet. So the things will clear as well on that flow chart, like how the, how it will work with the local DNS as well. So once it reads out the configuration file, the device registers using SIP messages. So it will ask like, uh, once you just open the Jabber, it will ask for the MSID and password and it should authenticate first. So it will authenticate 
and after authentic there will be one thing as well so if you are adding the same if you are adding the correct username and password but still it doesn't authenticate it means maybe you forgot to add the cucm like publisher servers ips in the cisco uds server or you maybe you forgot to add cup login server as well because before 8.5 which it 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 goes to the cup login server for the authentication, but after 8.5, it is like going to the CUCM for the authentication. So after authentication, it will check for the service profile. There is an option in the end user that is service profile, and we need to give that service profile for all the end users. Either it, it could be a default one as well, or you can create new one for different different users. So it will check for the service profile, which contains UC services, like whether this user profile is having access to instant messaging only, or this user, like this profile, this service profile can make calls and it can go to the voicemail as well. So it will check for all these things. So first one would be the service profile. And then at the, uh, at the back end of service profile, you should have the uses services which we need to configure like what all x what all are the access we need to give it to the user so it will just check these uh, uc services that depends on the user services like which service profile they are using right now and once it checks for the service profile whether that is for the instant messaging or for the profile it will just update the status there as because if it already authenticated it means it will log in but what all are the services it will do that depends on the service profile so this is the like the communication like jabber is on your uh, laptop on your machine laptop or on your desktop so it will send a https request to the cucm and then there will be a communication between CUCM and IMM, IMM and presence through the SIP. And the communication between Jabber and IMM and presence will be done through XMPP. So how the CUC, how the configuration or the integration is happening between the CUCM and IMM and presence. So for this, you need to create a SIP trunk between the CUCM as well as the IMM and presence. If you have, if you don't have any idea about the SIP trunk, like how to create the SIP trunks, then uh, I will, I will add the, I will add the link and the I button. So you can check my video on the SIP trunk, how we can configure it and how can we create the SIP trunk as well. Let me just give you a brief idea about the SIP trunk, like how we can create it here. So for the SIP trunks, you need to, to create the SIP trunk, you need to create the SIP profile as well as the SIP trunk security profile first. Those are the two main things which you need while you are adding a SIP trunk. So in the SIP profile, you need to mention the uh, IP address of the IAM and presence, like SIP, uh, CUCM IAM and presence server IPs in the SIP profile. And in the SIP trunk security profile, you need to check few things like, uh, there are many options of except present subscription, uh, out of dialogue refer and the unsolicited notifications or the header replacement as well. There are so many things which you can check whether you need it or not. There will be an option for the check and uncheck. So that depends on your requirement, whether you need to check it or you need to uncheck it. So that depends on, on the configuration. So once you add that and once you create the SIP trunk security profile as well as the SIP profile, then you can create a SIP trunk between the CUCM as well as the IAM and presence. And there is one more thing which, which is necessary for the for the Cisco Jabber to work. You need to add the gateway on the presence side. So once you, once you log in on the Cisco Unified IAM and presence, you need to add a gateway. And under that gateway, you need to mention your publisher IP publisher or subscriber that, that depends like uh, you need to add the ip of that thing like either publisher or subscriber who is going to publish the information that is the main thing which you need to add on the present site on the uh, like on the presence you need to just add the gateways and there is one more thing 
the like there are many services the jabber services which you need to add on the iamn presence not add you need you just need to activate those services in order to uh, make jabber work actually so there are five services on the iamn presence which you need to activate or or those services should be running those are the the first one is cisco presence engine second one xcp router then sip proxy then we have sync agent and then we have cisco client profile agent so these are the five services which should be activated or running on the iamn present so let's discuss about the use of these services what what is the use of cisco presence engine and all other services so if we talk about the cisco presence engine so we should activate or we should run this uh service on the iam and presence because if this service is stopped it will it will always show the offline status it will it will not show like whether that person is available in a meeting or on a call it will show the offline it will show every person as an offline so the main purpose of this presence engine is to provide the status updates on the jabber this is the main purpose of this service that is cisco presence engine and then next we have xcp router so what's the what's the main purpose of this xcp router so uh, in the previous example we just i just showed you the jabber and the iamn presence the communication between jabber and iamn presence is through the xmpp so the communication between jabber application and iamn presence communication is through this service that is xcp router if if we stop this service or if this service is not running all users will be logged off so if this service is running and we just stopped it and we we just like deactivated it then all users will be logged off from their jab then the next one that is sip proxy so we have sip proxy so mainly this sip proxy is used for the integration between cucm and iamn presence that is like we need to create sip trunk so that is sip trunk between the cucm and iamn iamn presence so mainly this service is used for the integration between cucm and iamn presence then we have a uh, sync agent so this service so when we activate this service then you will be able to manually change the status of your jabber and if this service is stopped or if this service is not running you will not be able to manually change the status of your jabber then the last one we have a client profile agent so this client profile agent is mainly used when you have a csf so uh, if this service is stopped so csf functionality will not show like uh, like you already have the csf your number is added and you are making a call then it will not show whether you are on a call or not if this cisco client profile agent service is stopped or not running then your jabber will not show any status like like uh, it will not show the call status mainly whether you are on a call or not it will not show that status so i hope uh, you, i hope these services like these services on the iam and present side are clear to you i will next thing uh, on the next video i will show you the when we are uh, registering the jabber on internet like if you are not connected with the vpn and if you are not on the corporate network then how the configure how the registration will happen on the jabber like how it will go to the external dns and then how it will go to the expressways expressways edge and expressway core and then the local dns as well as the cucm i created one like a flow chart diagram and i will show you all the steps through that flow chart so that you will be able to easily understand like how the messages are going from which direction to which direction i will show you in the next video and in the upcoming videos i will show you the configuration of jabber how we can uh, add the end user how we can add the user services how we can add the service profile and how we can add the csf as well and how we can 
like uh, uh, add those devices with the jabber like if we create one csf device how we can associate with the end user as well i will create i will show you all these things on the cocm in my upcoming videos okay so i hope you uh, really enjoyed my video and i hope you learned something from my video if you really liked it then please like share and subscribe it and please press the bell icon so that you will be able to receive the all the notifications of my upcoming videos and if you have any queries then please just let me know in the comment section i will try to resolve all your queries thank you